Hey guys, my name is Paul, this is the Furby Conform channel. It's, um, this is a kind of news channel, which you should definitely subscribe to, where I try to do my best to inform you of what's going on in the world, and like my opinion of what's important to be known. Um, there's a lot of things that happen, and if you have, if you have to subscribe and watch it, which I very much appreciate, there's a bit of a time difference between this video and the last one, so I've been away for a while. And in that time, quite a lot has happened. So anyway, so what I want to start off with is science and technology stuff, because I love starting off with science and technology. So what's going on in the world right now is there's actually a solar-powered airplane that's trying to make a flight all the way around the world off of just solar power, which is awesome. It's like two like 59 and 66-year-old guys that are flying this aircraft across the world. Um, a couple of NFL players of prominence, but that I don't know, are doing a like a brain donation, a science, you know, a donation to science, so that when they pass away, they can their brains can be studied for like concussion research. And um, <laughs> guys, it says in the article below, it's got like 20 concussions. And uh, that's a lot. It's probably really not good for you. And uh, besides that, NASA's spaceship Dawn is actually approaching the series uh, Dwarf Planet, what they're going to be calling it. They're not entirely sure it's you know, a planet or whatever, but they're calling it a Dwarf Planet because it's a really big asteroid in the asteroid belt. Anyway, I saw that it was using Ion Pulse, which I thought was sweet because I've heard about that in movies, and they're actually using it. So anyway, they're approaching that planet, they're going to do some research and try to find out what these two bright spots that appeared on series are. And uh, besides that, Apple is releasing its watch, which is pretty sweet. But it is nothing compared to Gumball's classic watch, the Armin Strong, because that is a beautiful watch. I want to be wearing that. And since I'm speaking about the Gumball 3000, which is like a race of really wealthy people driving really nice cars to go to really nice parties for like nine days in a row, I saw that Audi released the R8 LMS, and that's my car. I swear to you, that is my car. I'm going to be driving that. Anyway, so just want to start with technology and move into the world now, world news. Actually, we're going to start with the United States news. So, it looks like it's going to be a great time to be a doctor because, two reasons, um, an article below, they're saying that we're probably going to have a shortage of doctors, and it's like 90,000 doctors we're going to be short on in the United States. And, you know, as the United States appears to get, in my opinion, a little unhealthier with each year, you're going to need more doctors, but we're still going to be short, like 90,000. So it's a great time to start becoming a doctor right now because by the time that happens, you will be a great doctor. And in New York City, they found the bubonic plague on fleas riding rats in the, you know, in the sewers and stuff of New York City. So, or in New York. And that means that you have the potential to be a doctor and cure the bubonic plague again. Which, if you don't know, the bubonic plague was Black Beth during the, uh, <laughs> the Middle Ages. So, that's definitely a good thing to you know, start off with. Is thinking about becoming a doctor right now. And it's a great profession, well paying, just a lot of time spent learning. Which is not a problem because knowledge is priceless. Another great reason to be a doctor is that there's a super bug, super bug, like a virus going around that's been on like these doduoscopes, and basically it's like a doctor you know, equipment that uh, you know checks for a certain type of uh, procedure. And the problem with this is that it's a uh, it's not cleaned very easily. There's too many like nooks and crannies and stuff. Like if you're using a cutting board, you can get you know nasty stuff that grows and cracks if you don't have a you know, clean cutting board. So there's nasty stuff getting in all the nooks and crannies of these machines, and um, it's infecting other people as it's like this virus was able to mutate it. Anyway, so that's a big thing. It's actually causing a stir in Congress. I have that down below, as all of my articles are down below. I have that down below, and um, it's like, okay, so we're noticing that this scope isn't working. Is there any way we can make this scope a little more efficient? Because we can't take it away because it's needed, but it's kind of killing people. So yeah, this disease has affected, I think, like 13 or 14 people, and a couple have died. So it uh, very much is a very strong virus, but um, another great reason to be a doctor right now. Another thing in the United States is that the United States has declared Venezuela a uh, national security threat. And, and basically what they're saying is that in Venezuela, the, uh, the politicians are using intimidation and uh, threats, basically, to uh, secure positions. And that's not okay in the United States world of uh, policies and politics. So, um, so that's like, they're like, okay, hold on, we're not liking what's going on here. You need to change that and make that correct because this is not okay. And it's very interesting because when uh, Cuba was originally said, that, okay, you're a national security threat because you're communism, you're communist, and you could have nuclear weapons on your property that is very close to our shores. Basically, what they um, what they said is that because of that, when that happened, the next step was sanctions. So they're saying, okay, is Venezuela going to start getting sanctions? And Venezuela is an oil-rich country, and we're like, hold on, do we sanction a place where we get a ton of our oil? You know, where we have the opportunity to get a lot of our oil. So that's what's going on there right now with uh, the United States and Venezuela, because that's sweet. So two police officers were actually um, shot and uh, not killed, but uh, seriously injured. And one of them was shot in the face. And they're saying there's no mortal, no mortal killing. But I, I still understand how you can get shot in the face and not die. But um, but anyway, so there's two police officers, in Ferguson, Missouri, that were shot. And um, the actual police chief actually recently um, left office. He actually retired and said, okay, you know what? We're a um, new office. New people need to be in charge. We're just gonna reset the system on the side. 
And a final U.S. note, a United States note, um, we're actually reaching the debt limit in like March 16th is what the projection is. So basically in like two or three days, we're going to reach the debt limit. And when you get close to your debt limit, if you have a government that's powerful, you just say, yeah, well, we can have a little higher debt. That's okay. Oh, a little higher debt's okay. So yeah, that's, that's how that's going. So they'll reset that pretty soon here, I'm sure. And uh, we'll be good for another year. You know, and a couple of big things happened while I was away to um, political figures, you know, people with a little bit of power. And um, one was a Detroit judge, a federal judge in Detroit who was shot. Another one was the uh, American, the U.S. United States ambassador to South Korea who was attacked and cut on the face and armed with a knife. And there was also a, um, a Russian politician that was murdered. So all those articles are down below as well if you want to look into that. But that's actually what's going on right now is political figures of strength are being attacked. And if you haven't noticed it being really cold lately, actually, and, uh, I saw an article a couple of days ago, that in Nova Scotia it was so cold that the water actually froze down and like freeze killed fish. Because it was like all of a sudden so cold the fish just died. And then in Britain they're actually talking about putting a, well they're not talking, but the police commissioner guy was saying that, hey, uh, you guys should install CCTVs in your houses because then if, if there was cameras in your houses, when someone breaks in, we'd be able to see what's going on, who they were, we'd be able to arrest them. And you're like, oh yeah, great, but you have a camera in my house. And so, you know, there's things like that that are going around and they're saying it's kind of big brothery, like George Orwell's 1984. And I'm um, saying, okay, that's a little strange. Should, uh, should that be allowed? And, you know, that, that debate's going on. And uh, in Yemen, there's actually been uh, now 10 embassies that have closed down, you know, different countries that have, have said, okay, well, we're going to leave our embassies, we're going to get out of there, take our people home so they don't stay there in this, in this country. Because there was a takeover of the government there and a reinstatement of um, a different form of government. Also, Boko Haram, which is like an Islamic terrorist group that is currently waging war like Nigeria right now. And the article below says there's like 13,000 deaths, which is a pretty big number, you know, and um, I don't actually hear about Boko Haram a lot. But, uh, but what I saw is that Boko Haram has actually pledged allegiance to ISIS, which is, you know, not really a good thing because that's now, you know, another terrorist cell working with another terrorist cell. So it's like, oh, they got stronger. And the Washington Post actually released an article saying that, like, you know, anti-U.S. Uh, emotions and stuff in Russia is at an all-time high, like higher than it was back during, you know, like Stalin and like the hardcore communism time, which means that it's pretty freaking strong then if they're, you know, if they're 100% right. Also, Greece is talking about claiming Germany's, German assets in their country as reparation for Nazi war crimes because, you know, Greece has been in debt and German, Germany has been pretty much riding them to, you know, get that debt. Like, oh, well, that's, we're not okay with that. Okay, you know what, we'll give you a little extension here, but oh, you can't have this much money. Anyway, so they're basically saying you need to have your debt paid. And now Greece is like, well, hold on, you owe us Nazi reparation debt, or debt. so we're going to collect on that and not owe you as much. And so, you know, basically that's going on, so that's awesome because, you know, wars and countries being angry at each other kind of go hand in hand. So we'll see where that goes. Hopefully everything stays tight. The European Union should remain strong. But there was another article I saw, and I'll include it below, that uh, the euro is actually you know, decreasing at an even faster pace. So that's not good because the euro is one of the strongest currencies, and uh, the dollar is one of the other strong currency. And both are kind of having issues right now, if anything. So you know, definitely be watching your assets and your money and make sure you know, you're, uh, you're covering yourself. And I wanted to also add that just another one of those things where, you know, think for yourself and, you know, make sure you understand the situation. I saw an article about a couple of teens that stole some cremated remains, so ashes, basically, in an urn, and uh, they thought it was cocaine. So, just going to leave that to your imagination what happened next, because that was pretty funny. The article is below, but so that's interesting. I wanted to end the show with another picture of my Audi R8, because I will be driving that, and also my r and Strong watch, because I will be wearing that as well. So, I just want to show you that. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I will try to be much more regular with these videos. Have a great day.